Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to our video series on IGCSE Coordinated Sciences. This is Biology Unit 4.2. In today's lesson, we will be learning about plant nutrition. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Firstly, for today, we are going to be looking at photosynthesis. You need to know the definition of photosynthesis. This is the fundamental process by which plants manufacture carbohydrates from raw materials using energy from light. Photosynthesis is the reaction that happens in chlorophylls in plant cells. Chlorophylls trap light energy and convert it into chemical energy. The chemical energy is stored by the formation of carbohydrates. You need to know how to write the word equation and the chemical symbolic equation for photosynthesis. This is, carbon dioxide plus water, with the addition of light and chlorophyll, produces glucose plus oxygen. You may notice that photosynthesis is the reverse reaction of respiration. You need to know how the plant gets the carbon dioxide and water required for photosynthesis. The carbon dioxide comes from the simple diffusion of carbon dioxide in the air spaces in the leaves. The water comes from the roots. Then the water is transported to the photosynthesizing cell. Let's have a closer look at the leaf. You need to know the structure of a leaf and each of the parts functions and specializations. Firstly, the waxy cuticle. This is a waxy waterproof layer that covers the outer surface of the epidermis and the leaf. This cuts down water loss by evaporation at the leaf surface. Next, the epidermis, both upper and lower. These are single layers of cells that contain no chloroplasts, so light can pass through to lower layers. They act as a protective outer layer. Now, the palisade layer. This is the upper layer of the leaf, excluding the epidermis. Palisade cells have a lot of chloroplasts so that most of the photosynthesis can occur at the closest part to the light source. Palisade cells are arranged vertically so more chlorophylls have more chance of absorbing light as light passes through. Moving on, the spongy mesophyll. These have more round-shaped cells with lots of air spaces between them. They can still photosynthesize. The air spaces are what allows the plant to carry out gas exchange. Next, the vascular bundle. The bundle of tubes that are responsible for transport around plants, includes xylem, which are vessels that transports water and mineral salts. Xylem walls are tough and hard, so they are also used to support the whole leaf. Also included is phloem. These are vessels that transport dissolved foods and nutrients, for instance glucose. Now stoma, or the plural stomata. These are tiny holes in the lower epidermis that allows gases to diffuse in and out of the mesophyll layer. They are also responsible, along with the mesophyll layer, for plant gas exchange. Lastly, guard cells. These are cells that control the opening and closing of the stomata. They are light sensitive. Now, let's look at the factors affecting photosynthesis. You need to know that the rate of photosynthesis is affected by factors like light intensity and carbon dioxide levels. Before investigating the effect of light intensity and carbon dioxide levels, it should be noted that photosynthesis cannot occur without any carbon dioxide, water, light, and chlorophyll. If any one of these four is not available, photosynthesis does not occur. So, cells that do not have chlorophylls, like root hair cells, cannot photosynthesize. Also, if all chloroplasts were removed from a plant cell, it will not be able to photosynthesize. We need to investigate the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. As light energy is crucial for photosynthesis, it is logical that as light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases. This result can be investigated with the following experiment. As oxygen is a product of photosynthesis, the rate of bubble production can be used as a measurement to find the rate of photosynthesis. More bubbles per time mean a faster rate of photosynthesis. The light source can be moved to adjust the light intensity to the plant. If this experiment is done and the results were graphed, it would give a similar graph to this.
Okay, how is the effect of carbon dioxide levels on the rate of photosynthesis? As carbon dioxide is one of the reactants of photosynthesis, the concentration of carbon dioxide directly affects the rate of photosynthesis. If the concentration of carbon dioxide is low, there is not enough carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide becomes the limiting factor of the reaction. Also as the concentration of carbon dioxide increases, the rate of the reaction, or photosynthesis, increases as there are more carbon dioxide molecules to react. However, after a certain point, the graph levels out. This is because other factors, like light and water level, have become the limiting factor, and the increase in carbon dioxide concentration will not affect the rate of photosynthesis anymore. How about the effect of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis? Like any reaction, you can expect an increase in temperature to increase the rate of photosynthesis. However, since there are enzymes that catalyze photosynthesis, as the temperature reaches a critical value, the rate decreases. Because the enzymes are denatured and no longer catalyze photosynthesis. Next, let's look at plant nutrition. You need to know the importance and the deficiency effects of two main nutrients, nitrate and magnesium ions. Firstly, nitrate ions. Nitrate ions are used to synthesize proteins, and proteins are essential for a plant to make enzymes. Nitrate ions provide the essential nitrogen in the protein chain. Nitrate ions are dissolved in water and are absorbed from the soil by the roots. Nitrate deficiency will cause the plant to suffer from slow growth and abnormal growth. Next, magnesium ions. Magnesium ions are used to make chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis. Chlorophyll molecules contain magnesium, so without magnesium, they cannot be made. Magnesium ions are also dissolved in water and are absorbed from the soil by the roots. Magnesium deficiency will cause the plant to turn yellow, due to the lack of green chlorophylls. Finally today, fertilizers. You need to know the use of fertilizers and the dangers of using them. Fertilizers are used to prevent nutrient deficiency and also to boost and aid plant growth. Most fertilizers contain multiple elements as supplements. These are things like NPK fertilizers which contain nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. However, nitrogen-containing fertilizers can be dangerous when overused, causing eutrophication. Eutrophication is when the excess fertilizers get washed off and flow into bodies of water. This causes a chain of events leading to the death of the body of water. Eutrophication consists of a series of steps. 1. The input of nitrates and phosphates into the water, mostly from excess fertilizers. 2. Because of the boosted nutrients, there is a massive growth of algae at the surface, an algal bloom. 3. This massive growth of algae creates a layer of algae, which blocks sunlight from reaching inside. 4. Plants below the surface receive less light, cannot synthesize, therefore die. 5. Decomposer bacteria break down the dead plant matter. This removes oxygen from the water as they respire. 6. Now the oxygen level in the water is low, the fish will start to die, leading to more decomposing, and the lowering of the water oxygen level to a lower level. This cycle continues, ultimately leaving a dead body of water. The syllabus says you should be able to, so check if you can. Define photosynthesis. Explain the function of chlorophyll. State the word equation for the production of simple sugars and oxygen. State the balanced equation for photosynthesis and symbols. Investigate the necessity for chlorophyll, light, and carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, using appropriate controls. Describe the intake of carbon dioxide and water by plants. Identify and label the cuticle, cellular, and tissue structure of a dicotyledonous leaf, as seen in cross-section under the light microscope, and describe the significance of the features of a leaf in terms of functions, to include Distribution of chloroplasts, the function is photosynthesis Stomata, palisade and mesophyll cells, the function is gas exchange Vascular bundles, both xylem and phloem, the function is transport and support Describe the importance of nitrate ions for protein synthesis. Magnesium ions for chlorophyll synthesis. Investigate and state the effect of varying light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis, for example, in submerged aquatic plants. 
Explain the effects of nitrate ion and magnesium ion deficiency on plant growth. Describe the uses and the dangers of overuse of nitrogen containing fertilizers. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you. Oh, <laughs>